You know they say necessity is a mother of all invention. I know that all too well. My truck broke and that's what put me in this business. Ten years ago, my wife and I started this thing with my parents, barn, and no electricity. We really made our mark by fixing problems and helping people. Now we've grown to 155,000 square feet with electricity, 40 employees, and more than enough characters. <laughs> my mentor, Chuck, is an industry guru, and he's helping me to get this company hitting on all eight cylinders. This is a story way too crazy to make up. We are the Diesel Man. There's quite a bit going on here since I was down last. Yeah, things have changed a whole lot. Been implementing a lot of things me and you talked about. So we've got all these engines that are ready to go out. Seems like production's picking up. It's definitely uh, increased from where it was last time. Yeah, see the CNC side is actually running full time it looks like. Yeah, so the guys from Haas are in. We got the new Makino set up. That's going to be a game changer for us. Oh yeah, born those crank housing boards and cams yeah, and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So we got the production side. We got the whip area that you and I talked about before. Yeah, I can kind of see in production, you get some marked out areas for whip and so forth. Yeah, it's been really busy. I'm really excited to have Chuck. We've been working really hard on trying to get everything together. And so him coming in is always a, a great time for us, a lot of fun. But what I'm most excited about is his opinion on what's going on with the 6.4. <laughs> so what's the scoop? So this customer complained of intermittent white smoke and it was just running really rough. So he said it sounded like it had a miss. White smoke fuel. Yeah, definitely low conversion. Is it a smoke piston or camshaft failure? So what's the next step? The lead down test. Man, it runs so smooth. It does run really smooth. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you okay? Oh, my back. Okay, so obviously we were just having a little bit of fun there. That engine is way too hurt to try to crank it while it's in the truck. Regardless of that, we do everything possible to make sure we take care of our customers' trucks, despite the ridiculous amounts of medical bills we incur in the process. Oh, yeah. We're not, you okay? Yeah. Tossed your hat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch it! <laughs> you know, we do not have workers comp for this. <laughs> oh, it hurts. Yep, yep, yeah, it hurts. Oof, I see problems already right here. I've got streaking coming off of that turbo. So that thing looks, oh yeah. Chuck, look at this. That whole housing is covered, caked in oil. So he definitely had turbo seals leaking. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonder how low it got on oil before that happened, before he realized it. Yeah, that's often misdiagnosed. Boost pressure going into your crankcase, then the oil's coming out. Yep. And he had, a, I can see right here that he had coolant leaking out. And you can see that, look at the, look at the frame rail blowing down this side of the engine. <clears throat> yeah, well. It's no doubt hurt. So I guess the next thing is, is let's pull the oil filter out of it and see how bad this thing is. What do you think? Let's do it. You saw the oil on the frame. And while that is concerning, uh, the biggest fear right now is the coolant. I'm really worried that it got hot. If it did, then we may have some bigger issues. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Oh man. Christmas glitter. Yep. See copper? There's pretty big flakes in there. Some stuff's hurt. Yeah, no doubt. I don't see any copper though. My first takeaway is it's all aluminum or it's all metal, but not copper. Yeah. So I'm not thinking the bottom end's hurt. I'm thinking more like possibly a lifter or a camshaft. Right, right. What do you think? I think we're gonna have to crack into it to yeah. get a better identification. There's a lot of metal on the engine. So, so I'm gonna go with lifter. If I win, you guys get to buy me lunch. All right, cool. I'll come bug you when we get it over there. All right, you're always bugging me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
While the guys are busy getting the engine out of the truck, I'm gonna go ahead and reach out to Randy Neal. He's been in the industry forever, and this guy knows engines like Jimmy Dean knows sausage. Hey, Randy. Jack. How you doing? Randy, Randy, good to see you. Hey, All right, boss. How's it going? Uh, you know, it's another day in paradise. <laughs> what, what are you guys into today? Well, Randy, we got a power stroke that we tore into, and uh, we got some problems. So it's basically a glitter bomb. The whole little filter is full of metal. I mean, it's, uh, it's a disaster. So this thing's definitely coming apart. And I know from the past experience, there's a lot of difference between factory and what we are able to do, especially on balancing it. Well, it sounds like you got an engine that's not happy. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, first of all, you gotta understand balancing is not a direct means of increasing horsepower. In fact, balancing unleashes power. Well, what I mean by that is when it's unbalanced, it's causing a parasitic event. Well, as you balance it, that parasitic event is gone. Now, in doing so, you've netted more power. The key to balancing, bottom line, is durability and stability. You gotta remember, this crank's going round and round, piston's going up and down, but the whole valve train, everything else is linked. So that's sort of like taking a brick and throwing it inside of a washing machine and turn the thing and stand back. Well, it's the same effect because this unbalanced force is like a, a, like a newborn baby with a little hammer locked in a room. It'll destroy anything and everything. I would know about that. I'll that's right, it was a new job. But where I'm going with that is, if we don't get this unit balanced, then it's gonna generate hostile forces. Let me give you an example. Please. The factory had it balanced and it had 147 pounds of force hitting that crank 50 times per second. Now, I'm gonna make an hour drive. Do the math on your calculator, you'll smoke the calculator. <laughs> what if I, your guy in the shop balanced this assembly, he did a great job by the way. He had balanced it down to the same RPM down to three pounds. Oh wow. Now look, if you guess, that's a bad attitude. Right. What you do is you measure, you get perfect numbers, you build the bob weight to that matched assembly number, then you rebalance. What the factory did, God bless them. What you're gonna do, different animal. We have to understand the application that's gonna go back has to be totally balanced. Anything short of that, that engine's coming back to you shorter than you think. It won't stay out there. All right, balance it and make it happy. Make it happy. Happy life, happy customer. guys, 6-4 killed itself. Tell me what happened. Well, there's a chain of events that happened. So we've got failed lifters, failed camshaft, and if you take a look at this timing cover here, uh, there were a few things we can, we can see that it was actually leaking coolant. Okay. So as the engine was overheating, we were having oil film breakdown. Then, you know, as Cass pointed out earlier, with the damage to the, the oil pump, there was parts and pieces of lifters, was his suspicion, was in the oil pump. So here we have proof of that. Most people would say, okay, this is a bad batch of lifters. Actually, my opinion, and I want Chuck definitely to chime in on this, is that we found that the water pump was leaking, right? So more than likely what happened is, is the oil temperatures got really, really high on this thing. Because the oil gets really, really hot, the needle bearing that runs faster than anything because it's the smallest diameter, it starts to break down faster right at that point. You're gonna see that bearing fail before you see anything else fail. Gotcha. And what happens is, is one of these little dudes starts peeing in the pool <laughs> and ruins it for everybody. But yeah, you can see tons of fatigue on that. Yeah, it was crying for a while. Yeah. And generally what people do is, you know, they keep pushing that lifter right back in the hole, sticking it on at that point in time, yeah. it's done. 
I enjoy doing failure analysis when you give me the entire crime scene, yeah. which me and you talk about yeah. every other day. More than likely, there was a lot of water that was probably added to that block because he knew it had a coolant leak. Because you have coolant inhibitors, right? Yeah, oil film breakdown. You know, we use that term a lot, oil film breakdown. Right. So as we overheat the oil, it loses its viscosity. Mm -hmm. It has no more ability to create that. So even that roller, it's, it's rolling, right? That's friction resistance, but I still need that barrier. So oil has the ability to lift hydrodynamic wedge so that that's as it's rolling it, it's still getting a lubrication barrier or it becomes friction but as the oil gets to a point where it's breaking down and it's shedding off and it's no longer at that surface then I have fatigue and that's what those little seed cracks that you see all over okay. are for it's heat fatigue it's stressing the metal it's just when stuff gets really hard then it gets brittle and you see the little seed cracks and they're gotcha. breaking out of the material. So the customer complaint was white smoke and running rough. That's, right. this, this explains that? Yeah, because you have a lifter that's not opening and closing the valve anymore and you can't burn just fuel. You have to have oxygen as well. So uh, okay. it's actually just smoldering. It's actually not burning that fuel. So that would explain the white smoke, the mess, and uh, all the other problems. Now the guy needs a front cover, he needs a camshaft, he needs lifters. He's probably gonna need an oil change. <laughs> okay, I see you guys got the machining done last night. Looks like you got the crank and the cam in. Yeah. So tell me about it. Well, um, it's shiny, right? <laughs> Everything pretty much uh, was salvageable on the block. There's really, you know, not a lot left to do except for cleaning up some of the surface areas. We definitely got to do something to upgrade the oil cooling system. Yeah, you've been working on that project for a while, so. Yeah, this is a kind of a cool project that uh, I don't think you know about yet. But anyway, so this is what I call uh, the encapsulated oil cooler housing. Uh, we made a couple of modifications, and what this is going to do is it's going to sit right here where the coolant's going to now flow in the oil cooler and then back out on the other side here, and it's gonna submerge the cooler. So that's gonna give us a lot more surface area for heat dissipation. So we reached out to our friends over at Comp and uh, worked with them to give us a low shock technology camshaft, and it's a lot less violent on the cam, so Billy helped us design that. Truly, this wasn't a failure of the camshaft, and it really wasn't a failure of the, of the lifter. Everything has to have the right environment to live. There's always a fuse, right? Right. And you'll you'll move it around so That's right. yeah. if it's all harmonious you won't trip a fuse. Gotcha. When you start to stress anything a fuse is going to present itself. And it presented itself here with failed lifter which caused a failed oil pump which caused a failed front cover. Oops. All that metal and metal oil filter was. Yeah. What we'll do is go ahead and get this buttoned up, get the fuel system on, get the turbocharger mounted and then ready for the truck. Road test. <laughs> I'll bug you if I have any issues or find anything. I'm sure you will. Hey, look at hey, there. Hey, buddy. Good, Good to see you. see you again. Yeah. How's it going, man? Great. How's it going with you? What brings you here? Well, you know, you've got all this cool diesel stuff in this amazing shop, so I thought I'd stop by and, well, see what you were doing. Well, perfect timing, because uh, supposedly we have a uh, test drive that's ready to go. Well, heck yeah. I know you're a gas guy, but you up for it? Absolutely, man. Let's go smell some diesel. Yeah. We get in the truck, we go down the road for a ride, a test drive, to see how everything worked after all of this work. But if, if you wanna haul big loads, or if you wanna move heavy things, a diesel would be the way to go because it's a torque monster. Absolutely. Okay. Cass was explaining to me how diesel engines work, and we were actually in a really great conversation about all this, and then we get to the U-turn and turn around to try to head back to the shop. And I think he wanted to show off a little bit. And airflow is gonna be key to getting that heat to move away. Yeah, and those are the things that at low RPM, uh, or excuse me, low speed, are going to be really... Uh, yeah, because you've got no air coming through at all. Oh, crap. She sucker just died. <laughs> I see the battery light came on. Great. 
Holy mackerel. Have we got enough uh, momentum? I don't think so. Of course, I come out and things don't exactly go as planned. Um, which sucks. Uh, it could be a blown fuse on the high pressure fuel pump. How about this? What's the first thing you'd look at in this situation if you had a blown fuse on a high pressure fuel pump? Probably the first thing I would do is ohm the circuit out. See if it was ohm the ground before I just stuck another fuse in it and blew it gotcha. out. Um, if it wasn't, I would probably go ahead and put another fuse in it and then do a high pressure fuel test. So we can run it through and see if it's making rail pressure at different RPMs through IDS, which is Ford software, um, and see what that looks like. How did you learn this? My truck broke. So that's what got me into this industry. Just having to not have the, the, the money to fix, to have somebody else fix it. So, um, How long ago was that? Oh, I've been in this industry, well, fixing trucks, diesel trucks for 20 years. Yeah. Did um, you go to school or did you just? No, um, you know, I just started working on small engines. I grew up on a farm. So I understood, you know, the concept of an internal block of combustion engine and everything. So that was kind of, you know, that made it a little bit easier. But then the, the magic that happens between a compression ignition engine and spark ignition, like how in the world does something fire without having spark plugs? How is that even possible? Right. When you start to understand the physics of something, right? And that goes, again, with the combined gas law, right? Right. So you start understanding that, and then that starts making more sense. But once you get your head wrapped around the compression ignition, you go, you know, it's not really that much different. Everything else is pretty... Well, losing one system, the ignition system, actually makes it more reliable in a way because you got one less system to fail? It does. The only complexity that it does add, though, is now we have a high-pressure fuel system which is more prone to fuel issues because of its sensitivity through um, its intolerances of contamination, yeah. I have learned a lot about diesel today, thank you. You're welcome, I mean, anytime we can break down on the side of the road, <laughs> hey, buddy, I'm That's here for you. That's a learning opportunity. Yeah. When you're taking apart that many things during an engine job, something like that, the probability for something to go wrong like this is high. That's the reason why you take drives to begin with. The good news is, we were in just the right place for something like this to happen. Mm. Whew, holy mackerel, that thing's hot. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Ouch. Let's see if I can get to that. Oh, okay. The harness on the high pressure fuel pump. Let me try to connect it. I think it got, I think that tab wasn't seated good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. All right, try it again. Good deal. Back in business. Yep. Luckily, the whole thing was just a loose plug. Cass had it fixed in about 10 seconds. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So? No short of just pork whatsoever. You converted now? Well, Yes, especially for like big heavy things. If I need to boot big heavy things, yeah. I want a diesel. But why don't I show you the real reason I showed up today? Check this out. Oh man. Can you help me with that? Definitely. 